What's up, everybody? This is RVT coming at you with the Alabama Texan in post game video. Alabama wins 49 to 42, and that was a lot closer than I wanted it to be. They made it real interesting in the, in the uh, fourth quarter, but we come up with a late touchdown, play action passage, Austin Fowler get the touchdown, and uh, and um, they go right down the field and score it again. It came out of the onside kick, and two great teams. I want to go over a little recap before I get something to say against the. For the people that were commenting on my on my uh, pregame video, we all knew Johnny Manziel is Texas A&M. He's the face of the program. We knew he was going to play great. The best player in college football, hands down, made some absolutely amazing plays today. <laughs> it that uh, um that the, it was almost insane how reminiscent this this game was, or how similar this game was compared to last year's game, especially at the start. Just like that, they came out scoring 14 points in a row last year. It was 20 points to our nothing, and just extremely similar. And the the play that he made was amazing, just having trust in your receivers. And he, he it was amazing to be able to have the opportunity to throw that football, breaking how many tackles he did, ran back like 20 yards, and just heaved it up, and the receiver came down with the catch. Uh, but, yeah, in my pregame video, I said that uh, the only two receivers I believe was really competitive was or and really was going to give us fits with Mike Evans and we all know dear god he was ridiculous 270 something yards receiving that's that's unheard of especially against our defense uh just a, a tremendous right ride, ride receiver his his skills is amazing his size is ridiculous what I don't know how tall he is but he's he's huge to put it at that we could not cover him for nothing um i also mentioned Ricky Seals Jones he didn't show up today and the one the one receiver that I will give you guys credit for that you you all were saying that was going to have a big game was Malcolm Kennedy, and he did. He had three touchdown catches, so props there. But aside from that, nobody else really impressed me on, in the receiving core. And the running backs, oh dear God, don't even I, I address this issue so many times. People saying that Texas A&M the the Texas A&M fans were saying that they had the best running back back best backfield in the country. All I know is nothing I saw today and it showed me that at all. I mean, Ben, ben Molina had a decent game, but aside from that, there, there was nothing. And we all know. Uh, first of all, once again, I'd like to say a great game. That was an absolutely great game. Texas A&M played better than I thought, especially offensively. Uh, we knew their defense was not going to play well because it's not necessarily a great defense. So we knew they were going to struggle. But great game. And I still don't agree with some of the things that you said, but either way, it was a good game. And I will say that I think it's closer. It was closer than I thought it was going to be. So, good game, Aggies. And yeah, that's that. Uh, now to check out these updates. Um, offensively, we played great. I was so impressed at how much better or how much our offensive line improved going from week one to week three because we hit the bye week week two. That was it. We um, pretty much manhandled their front seven. They didn't necessarily get any pressure on AJ this whole entire game. I don't believe, they did not get a sack this whole game, I don't believe. Uh, TJ ran really well. Jostin Fowler played great. Kenyon Drake had some yards, too. And I believe that was the only three that saw Tom playing today. But they all played really well. And AJ was spot on. He was played excellent. And uh, he uh, career yard and pa career high in passing yards. Uh, great game by the wide receivers. Um, we only had one turnover, and that was a, a fumble that was... Um, that was really, uh, really big in the game by TJ Yeldon. And, um, yeah, the turnovers were the difference, though, because I think without those two, those two touchdowns or two interceptions that Johnny throws, it, it's definitely, it, it's a whole different ball game. So they could probably score a touchdown and we don't get that pick six. And that was a great, great play by Venice and Siri. Um, anything else? Uh, defense, so secondary. Ah. Uh, Bad, bad. Um, I think it was more of a young corners matched up against a huge receiver with Mike Evans, who is amazing. That I think that made. I think we will improve, but that I think was a big part in it, and that I think is the weakness of our defense. Our front seven played really well, contained Johnny Menzel for the most part. He did get a couple decent runs, but nothing too spectacular like last season. I think I believe he ended up with 90 rushing yards this game, and. Uh, I mean, I'm happy that we got the win. There are some things that we need to improve on. We started off, we improved, 
um, from week one to week three offensive line. It's huge run game was was great. Pass game offense was amazing this game. Defense not so much. Front seven played well. So I mean it was our front seven played personally I believe they played great. Back seven I mean back four uh, and secondary in general they they are the ones that need to improve for us to to com comfortably win every single week. So uh, anything else? Once again, Johnny Menzel played out of his mind. He did have a couple turnovers, but he's the reason he was in there. Him and Mike Evans was a dangerous combination. And um, I hate to t say I told you so because it was a close game, but the run game wasn't what you guys expected for Texas A&M. The run game, the pass game, um, aside from Mike Evans, <laughs> wasn't necessarily what you guys expected, even though, frick, how many yards did Johnny Menzel put up? 420. I was not denying by any means Johnny Manziel was gonna have John, Johnny Manziel was gonna have a big game. He played great, um, but just there's some things that you, you Aggie fans said that uh, I knew was not true, and but I do want to say great game. And let's go over the stats real quick. So I can't think of stats off the top of my head. AJ ended up 20 to 29, 334 yards, four touchdowns. Johnny was had 28 to 39, 464 through the air, five touchdowns, two picks. TJ Yeldon ended up 150 yards on the ground. Kenyon Drake had 50. Jocelyn Ballard had 37. Uh, Johnny Menzel had 98. Ben Molina, 42. The Brandon Williams, who everybody was uh, telling me before the game, had 6 yards. Um, DeAndre Wright led the team with receiving 82 yards. OJ Howard had, he had a big game. I forgot about OJ Howard. had 68 yards. A big, big catch in that, that last drive before we scored that touchdown. Kevin Norwood, Kenny Bell had the long screen pass for a touchdown. Kevin Norwood also had a touchdown. Amari Cooper, uh, he still hasn't had that breakout game yet this season. Uh, he, I wouldn't really consider it a sophomore slump because it's only two games into the season, but he'll 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 get there. But just an, a great receiving core overall, and I believe we all know that. Um, so yeah, and Mike Evans, we all know. Amazing. Seven receptions, 279 yards, one touchdown. And um, that was on the 95 yard play. And Matthew Kennedy had three touchdowns. Um, that's uh, that's about it. Big two interceptions by Cyrus Jones and Minnesota Siri. That, oh my, that, uh, that targeting penalty was horrible. If he would have got ejected from that game, then that could be a really, really big thing because the number probably one of the best safeties in the country getting ejected for the game for a horrible call. That would have been that would have been horrible. And I'm glad I am glad that they they can go back and review those plays. But the fact that they figured out it wasn't actually a targeting penalty and they couldn't take the 15 yards back that that's makes no sense and that just that's stupid. And then the other call on Texas A&M when the player kept playing without the his helmet on. That's just the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I mean, I mean, I know you have to call that because that's the rule, but that's just a stupid rule. I mean, what's he supposed to do? Just quit? I mean, you're giving offensive leeway. He's just try to just yank his Roddy Selman off, and bam, they can't play. You give him a 15 yard penalty. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about this game in the comment section below. Roll tie, go socks, go Titans to you. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and at twittercom s 3 rtr Great game, Aggies. Um, you 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 possibly could run the table. You could. I think you'll have a good chance. Your your offense will have a good chance against LSU's defense. And uh, I'm not real sure who Texas A&M plays the rest of the season. I'm not sure they draw. I think they draw Florida out of the East again. And I don't know aside from that. But that's about it. Catch you guys later. Uh, real time. See you. See you next week uh, with my preview for Colorado State. And I actually won't be able to say this whole. Um, I'll be able to come up at you with a, a recap of the Colorado State game because um, my sister is getting married next Saturday, so we we'll, won't we'll be able to watch football, which sucks. That really, really does suck, but that's it. Catch you guys later. Um, have a great day.